Okay, so again, this is the data that represents just your raw data. It would be in a lab notebook. It doesn't have to be pretty. When you go to the data tab, and you click data analysis and this is for those of you that are going to be using Windows on a Mac it works just a tiny bit different but this is a tool pack so if you don't already have this on your computer it's free you just have to go you know Google it like how do I get the data analysis tool pack and it'll step you through it every year they re-image these computers for us so every year I have to go in and like look up how to add this tool pack again it's not too complicated. When you click data analysis, you'll see ANOVA single factor. You want to click OK. It's right, it's the first thing alphabetically. And then it's going to ask you your input range. Now, since I highlighted it before clicking data analysis, it selected it for me. But again, with a Mac, like normally it kicks you out and you have to go in and highlight it again. Um, my input range is correct. I can see that, A1 to F11. And then it tells me, is it grouped by columns or is it grouped by rows? And that's important. My IVs are grouped in columns. And then I included the labels. So I need to make very sure that this labels in first row is checked and it defaults to an alpha of 0.05. It's so important that you pay attention to that alpha value because that's where it's going to get its critical value from. It's going to use the critical value chart for whatever alpha value you tell it to use. So just make sure that's set. Um, I always like to just tell it to give me a new worksheet. Click OK. And there is all the information. So you can see that the p-value is extremely low, 2.8 times 10 to the negative 6. Your critical value was 2.38, which we could go back and look at a chart online and look at 5 degrees of freedom and 54 degrees between and verify that that is the critical value. Our calculated F was 9.03, which gives us a very low p-value. Um, it does the averages for you, but in APA tables, we often ask you for standard deviation. That is not the same thing as variance, so you'll want to go back to your original data sheet and just calculate the standard deviations using, you know, your formula, standard deviation of a sample, select your groups, and it'll calculate those for you drag across. So 9.4, 8.4, 7.9, we can go back to what we calculated. It is not the same numbers. Cedric, yes? Wait, I think uh, variance is standard deviation squared. It is. It's related to standard deviation. I think it is standard deviation squared. It does give you the averages, though. And you could double check those that they should be correct. And then your sums you won't need, but your count is your sample size, which you're thinking, duh, I can count to 10. But it's really nice if you're using a huge set of data and some of the cells are not filled in. Like in the homework sample I'm giving you, one of the stores burned down, and so you lost that sample. It was a grocery, it's, it's a grocery store packaging. It's a marketing problem. I love it because that's what my dad did my whole life was stuff like this. Um, only I don't think he was the one doing the data analysis. So that'll be your homework as you do this. And then you'll use, again, the APA formatting guide to create a table to summarize it. Okay.